All right. Hello and welcome everyone to week seven of our third annual Arkansas Bike Summit. Thank you for being here. My name is Amy Ross and I am the director of Bike Bentonville at Visit Bentonville. And while we wish you were here visiting with us in the mountain bike capital of the world, we'll look forward to seeing you here sometime in the near future. A little bit of background about the Arkansas Bike Summit, if this is the first time you're joining us. The Arkansas Bike Summit was created for the purpose to increase awareness of best practices, engage advocates, industry thought leaders, and change makers, and tackle topics such as development, marketing, and cultural trends. A few housekeeping notes before we get started. After the presentation today, we'll host 10 to 15 minutes of question and answer. So take the time and drop those questions in the Q&A box at the bottom anytime throughout the presentation and we'll get to those at the end. If you want to share any of your experiences with us today while we're on the Zoom call, feel free to tag us on social media at Visit Bentonville at Bike Bentonville and hashtag AR Bike Summit 2020. I'm really excited about today's presentation. We have Tiffany Sini with us, who is the transportation manager at Facebook. Tiffany is one of the managers on their staff and Facebook is headquartered in Milano Park, California. She is responsible for managing, designing, and implementing the day-to-day -day operations of transportation services. In her seven years of working on the transportation program, her work includes overseeing a comprehensive bike program which impacts both internal and external communities. With the ability to offer robust programming, including bike classes, group rides, one-on-one -on -one consultants, bike sales, repairs, donations, and events, she helps get people to stay engaged and ready to ride when other transportation options are less appealing or not even an option. She cares about growing and diversifying the cycling community and is always thinking about how to get more employees to ride while also engaging the local outside public communities to try bikes. In her spare time, Tiffany enjoys using her e-bike for her essential trips and enjoying the outdoors modeling behavior for colleagues and local community members. We're super excited to welcome Tiffany today, and I'm gonna hand it over to her. Thank Thanks. you, Amy, for that welcome, warm introduction. I am going to share my screen with you guys, and I always preface everyone, I work at a tech company, but I'm not that techie, so bear with me. One moment here while I get this going. I think we've got the right one. All right. I think you can see me and you can see my screen, okay? We can. All right. Let's do this. So as Amy mentioned, I'm Tiffany. Um, I, I'm with the Facebook team, of course, uh, on our transportation uh, program here in Menlo Park, California. Um, I'm gonna kind of share with you guys uh, a little snippet and um, kind of get some ideas and things going, thoughts for some solutions to getting on the road these days. So as soon as I figure out how to press play. All right, so we're going to talk about, you know, a little bit about myself, um, how Facebook fits in the community on a, a larger and smaller scale, um, the Facebook connection to the community, um, you know, how we, how we talk and connect with our internal and external communities. Um, we're gonna go over a little bit about some of the different bike programming offerings that we have. Um, 
and also some of the things that we do in a local community as well. Um, and then we're going to talk about communication and change and then, you know, we'll have a little dialogue. So who am I? You know, how did I, how did I get on your screen today? Um, I, you know, I, of course, went to school. I went and uh, studied business management, uh, worked my way up the chain that way. And um, I actually graduated in 2018 from San Francisco State. Um, and I graduated in a year where it was kind of the dot-com bust, so to speak. So there weren't many jobs around, you know, as, you know, as able to pick from. So went on a couple different interviews and landed upon a little dispatcher gig for a transportation company. And, you know, I was kind of at the point where I was tired of sitting at home, watching soap operas and rearranging furniture. So I said, okay, I'll take it. It's part-time, sure. Just get me out of this house. Um, and it immediately turned into full-time. Um, and I kind of learned my way as a dispatcher and understanding, you know, transportations and shuttles and buses on a corporate level. And that kind of steered my direction into, tra into corporate transportation, which was kind of a new area. Um, and so that was good growth and good learning for me. Um, and just kind of working my way through different employers that were sponsoring programs uh, during the time. And then of course, I landed myself at Facebook through great mentors and previous uh, people that I've worked with um, that helped to facilitate that connection uh, with Facebook. And so, you know, utilizing your partners and networking um, groups really kind of enable you to learn and advance and promote yourself. Um, and also kind of knowing yourself and understanding kind of what you want to do. So, you know, at my time at Facebook, I've been here for about seven years. Um, and I, my entire time I've been on the transportation team. Um, I kind of started on the side of shuttles and, and buses and understanding that. And I kind of wanted to dip my, dip my hand in another part of the transportation program. And so with me living locally, uh, close to where I work, Facebook. Um, I figured, you know, let's try looking at the biking world. Um, it was something that I figured I could maybe try and do as opposed to driving. And I also wanted to kind of help our local community um, as a resident of the local community and as an employee of Facebook, which is in my community, um, you know, I kind of saw both sides, you know, with bikes being a program that we offer, bikes also were in our community. And so I said, well, let me kind of step into the bike world and bike program and understand that a little bit more. So, you know, through education and different work structures, different mentors, different partnerships, different networking opportunities, um, and also understanding and learning more about myself and you know my commitments and what I'm interested in, I landed myself on the Facebook bike program. So let's kind of jump into that and explore a little bit more of how Facebook fits into the community. When I talk about community, community can mean a lot of different things, um, a lot of different levels. So I wanted to share with you guys this map, which shows you the Bay Area um, here in San Francisco Bay Area, California, specifically focusing on Silicon Valley. Facebook is, of course, in Silicon Valley. And you see there are a lot of companies in our area, um, all the big name companies that you guys are very familiar with. A lot of us live in the same small space. So, you know, that's the larger community. Now let's talk about the local community. Facebook, we're located in, our headquarters is located here at Menlo Park, California. Um, if you see on this map, on one end, we're surrounded by water. 
And on the other end, we're surrounded by freeways and a bridge and two main thoroughfares that come through two local communities of residences. Um, so we're, we're kind of on a little bit of a, an island, so to speak, and we have to figure out how we facilitate getting our employees, our internal community, um, as well as our external community, you know, the residents that live around, how do we get folks in and out of the area um, safely and efficiently? So let's talk a little bit about traffic. Um, if you've ever been to the Bay Area, um, it's tons of traffic, tons of traffic on a normal day. Um, we're in a very different situation these days with us all being in COVID. So the map on your left shows you what a normal commute day would look like. Tons of red all over the place. Um, right now, it's pretty much free sailing, but the red is starting to creep back up as local businesses are opening up and people are starting to go back to work. Um, we also have about 27 different transit agencies uh, within the Bay Area alone. So while you think, oh, that's amazing, you've got tons of options, uh, it also creates a bit of friction uh, because not all transit agencies speak to one another um, and they all don't connect seamlessly. So we have to offer solutions to get people to and from work and keep the traffic moving as much as possible in our area. So let's talk about how we do that, how Facebook connects for transportation. Um, I want to kind of just talk about our team's mission and vision statement at Facebook. So our, our transportation team's vision is bringing people together. Our mission is ensuring high quality commute and campus options that are available that reduce barriers to bringing those people together. So how do we do that? Well, we offer tons of options to get to and from work and to make you feel comfortable about utilizing those options of getting to and from work. Uh, we offer shuttles, uh, we offer van pools, car pools, um, ride shares, we offer bikes, we offer public transit passes, um, we offer emergency ride home vouchers just in case you've utilized any of these resources and need to get home to a loved one or something's going on. Um, we've got wellness benefits to help you support biking. Uh, we've got lockers and shower rooms. Uh, we've got preferred parking for those that utilize van pool or carpool. We've got uh, parking for your bike so you can feel comfortable about really riding your bike and utilizing alternatives as opposed to being by yourself in your car and driving. Who wants to be alone on a ride full of traffic? So let's figure out ways to get people out of those cars and into something that is more healthier and more appropriate. So that's internally. So we also need to make sure that we keep an external connection. And how do we do that? Again, uh, we want to engage with the local communities and our local partners. So we engage with our local businesses and the bigger companies of Silicon Valley to all talk to one another, to, to understand how we can work with the transit agencies and local city councils and government agencies uh, to create better traffic flows and patterns, um, working with local community agencies, local organizations to support um, what the community needs at a local level, um, hosting different events, rides, uh, providing information, education, and just providing that support um, and engagement so that people can really understand what it is that folks need um, to connect. So I'm going to go into a bit about a little bit more about our actual Facebook programming and what we offer our employees um, to help give them those options 
specifically on biking, because I think that's what we're all here for today is let's talk about biking. Um, so of course we offer shuttles, but you know, let's focus on the, the local communities and as well as people that may live on a, on a further scale, they're still able to connect with our shuttles uh, by biking. But in our bike program, uh, we offer a lot of great uh, services to keep people connected and engaged and thinking about utilizing bikes. So we offer classes, um, help you learn how to fix a flat, learn how to ride on gravel, learn how to ride in city street roads. Um, we offer consultations so that you can get more in depth if you've got real questions that you wanna ask. Uh, we offer, you know, bike to work day where we host different vendors and events uh, that may come, out, come around and invite local community members. Uh, to engage. We offer group rides so that people can get familiar with riding, um, get familiar with the community, get familiar with the surroundings locally or near their home so that they feel more comfortable about riding. Uh, we offer different uh, pop-up sales and shops so that people can buy gear and again get more education and understanding about uh, biking. And of course, you know, tons of marketing. We're constantly trying to throw different ideas and different thoughts to really keep people engaged um, and really increase the awareness and get people to think about and convert to commuting to work by their bike as opposed to utilizing, you know, again, their own solo car. Um, of course, with COVID, uh, we're unable to do a lot of these things in person. So we've switched our model to a virtual sense. Um, so we're still able to offer a lot of the same services. We just do it on a, a digital scale. Um, so we now do virtual classes. Um, we do virtual consultations, uh, online uh, bike event weeks where we're uh, offering different rides and activities and things to go find out in nature, um, gaming competition, um, we just launched an online bike shop where you can buy your, your bikes, um, accessories, gear, helmets, and again, um, marketing through emails, uh, focus groups, um, virtual conferences, um, just really, again, keeping people engaged and thinking about biking. And, you know, in COVID, while people are not biking specifically to work, at least getting them out on a bike, try biking. And that helps promote that change of behavior um, so that people then think about, all right, I'm stoked about biking. Let's try this to ride once we get back to work, whether that be locally or if you live a little further, you can bring your bike on the shuttle and connect that way. There's great parking and shower rooms so you don't feel like, oh, you know, you're riding to work and you're going to be stinky. No one wants to be in a meeting room with me. We, we've got you covered there. So communication and change. How do you communicate? Again, communication is what reduces those barriers. Um, it promotes the understanding, approach, it, it promotes awareness and engagement. Um, the key with internal or external communities is really communication and engagement. You want people to know and understand that you're here as a partner to help them solve uh, their issue or get what they need um, and providing those, those alternatives and tips and tools for them to use to, to reduce those barriers. Um, with us on campus, we, we communicate through the virtual conferences and consultations um, emails, different surveys, um, just to continue to engage and understand, you know, what it is that people need. Um, just a little bit of data here, um, as you can see um, on the, the graph at the left. Everyone is interested in getting a bike. Where can you get a bike? Um, that was a bit of a challenge for us in offering, you know, our bike shops to folks with the campus being closed. So we really worked to find a solution to still offer um, sales and accessories and, and a shop value for those, you know, I'm sure you guys know bikes are sold out across the country. Um, so our bike shop fortunately 
we have a couple bikes on hand, more than a couple, uh, that we're able to, to allow our internal community to purchase and get back on the road and get back cycling or try cycling um, and thinking about a new approach to how they can get to work. Um, just doing, constantly doing surveys and engaging people to see, you know, how long they've been a cyclist. Um, as you can see from here, um, in just a short couple months, we've gained new ridership um, just from the engagement and different approaches that we're taking um, to getting people to think about bikes. Um, and again, you know, communication through work chat, uh, through rides, through communi um, communication tools, with the, the gaming and all sorts of different things, just really keep people focused and engaged, um, sharing route planning applications, um, there's all kinds of things that you can do. And the cool thing about being virtual is that you can expand this to even reach a global market. Um, so if you've got different offices or locations, different businesses, you can almost kind of um, utilize the same model to repeat what you're doing in one location in a whole other office location. So again, I wanna come back to this slide because I think it really speaks volumes when you're talking about communication. Um, really, it is the key to getting people to think about making that change um, in how that they commute to campus or how they commute to work or how they commute locally. Um, you know, offering education, offering classes, offering bike clinics, um, engaging with transit agencies, engaging with your local city organizations, um, really creating that space to allow people to understand and, and ask and question what they need. Um, you know, when you're thinking about people coming to work, you know, people need to have access to making sure their bike is safe. Where do I put my bike clothes after I'm done biking so that I can change into my work uniform or my work outfit? Um, you know, giving them the proper stations for hair, showers, locker rooms, so that they have adequate space to put those things. Um, proper lighting on the streets, working with local agencies, making sure there's bike lanes, um, improvements, trails, uh, signage, restrooms. Um, all these things really help to create uh, that behavioral change and get people to think about trying something different. Um, so key takeaways, um, building by culture and community is remotely possible. Uh, people are motivated when you have the proper infrastructure, incentives and personal connections um, to biking. Um, biking promotes healthy habits. So getting people to think about the wellness benefits to biking. Um, the alternatives to sitting in traffic for hours upon hours or waiting for that, that carpool person that may work a different schedule so now you've missed your, your carpool or not being able to have those public transportation connections. Um, there's so many different, different things that, that can be taken from biking and helping people to think about different ways. Um, creating those partnerships with your local agencies and communities to really engage and foster that communication and understanding, um, to understand what your employees need and what the communities need from you. Um, and of course, you know, the people that live in your community are your employees. A lot of those people that live in the communities locally to us, they also work um, at Facebook. So you wanna make sure that they have safe routes um, to and from work. Um, and again, I can't stress enough that, you know, communication really creates that understanding and adaptive and acceptance of that change. So with that, you know, I leave this, this photo here because with biking, especially in the, the new world, um, there's endless possibilities to how you can create different models and programs and examples to get people to think about different ways of commuting and trying different options. So with that, I will stop 
sharing my screen and we can go through some questions. Awesome. Thanks, Tiffany. That was, that was great. I think there's a lot of good information in there and a lot to even dive into and unpack a little bit. A um, couple questions to kick things off. And if anyone in the audience has any questions, remember, go ahead and, and throw those down in the Q&A box at the bottom and we'll get them over to Tiffany. Um, Tiffany, one of the things I wanted to talk about a little bit is the partnership that you mentioned between the community and the public and Facebook, what have been some of the biggest challenges with the local municipality um, or city when talking about planning and you touched on infrastructure, um, you know, as far as like developing new infrastructure or putting different pieces of infrastructure in place to make it safe for um, that community. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, I think some of the challenges with that um, time, you know, when you're working with local government agencies, timing can be a challenge. Um, I think at Facebook, we tend to want to, we have a slogan of, you know, work fast and break things. You know, we want to get them done and, and challenge and approach with new ideas. Uh, but local government agencies and cities, they don't, you know, always work on the same wavelength as we do. Um, so time can be a big challenge um, in getting um, different plans and proposals uh, passed through, getting feedback and just getting things launched. Um, Money and funding can also be a big challenge for a lot of cities and agencies. Um, they don't necessarily have the funding to do uh, a lot of programs and things. And so, you know, it's a matter of helping find and source, you know, where can they find that funding from? Or where can we maybe uh, help play a role in helping to source funding for uh, different um, initiatives and things that we want to get improved for our city. So on the flip side of that, what has been one or two big successes that you've had working with um, local city or municipality um, as a collaborator or partner? Yeah. Um, I think on the local side of working with the community, we're able to really engage with a lot of the, the local um, community places and partnerships where we're able to do um, bike clinics and educational classes and seminars um, for local folks that live within the area. Um, we're able to give back and do donations of bikes to local high schools um, and organizations that really kind of need that help and lending hand. Um, you know, parents, parents have to drop kids off, then try and get to work. So if we can help alleviate, you know, making sure their kid has a, a safe bike and a safe route to get to and from school, that then helps the parent uh, take a little bit of stress off their mind. And also, you know, create that change so that, you know, people can bike or, you know, one person go ahead, take the car, do what you need to do. And we can do our biking locally. Um, so I think that's been a really good benefit of being able to kind of address the local community's needs and, and um, giving people those tools, um, sponsoring those different uh, programs for the high schools or for the seniors or for the elderly or for anyone that kind of needs uh, a bike where they can kind of go to these local uh, city agencies and, and, and places and get those tools that they need so that they can get out and go biking. And then they can go back and get the education on how to fix their own, own bike um, so that they can continue to travel. And again, working with a, a government on getting, you know, uh, streets and sharrows um, on the street so that people can feel comfortable about biking. Has there been a lot of um, improved, you know, protected bike lane infrastructure that has happened since 
um, since you've been around? Definitely. Um, you know, just myself living, you know, I live fairly close to the campus. And, you know, I've seen a lot of improvement, even, you know, during the COVID time, um, there's been a lot of structural infrastructural improvement to the streets and adding a lot of Shero roads and adding the protected bike lanes um, to ensure that, and I was like, oh, this is great. So that when we are, you know, promoting all of this, you know, you know, gear up to get ready to come back to work and ride your bike, you know, here, look at the new areas that we've have that's got, you know, protected lanes and such in it, um, extended trailways that are cleaned up and protected um, to really help get people to understand that it's okay and it's safe to ride. Yeah, I think that's fantastic. Um, from a Facebook perspective, what impact has accessibility to bikes had in some of the other communities? And I think maybe some of this question goes into a little bit broader of like, you showed us a map with, you know, the entire like Silicon Valley and there's, it's obvious there's a lot of other big players there. Um, have, have you worked with a lot of those other big players to increase that infrastructure or programming pieces um, for the entire cycling community across the valley? I think we work together to share a lot of ideas on, you know, what we're all doing as far as when it comes to biking, you know, what different programs are we all kind of promoting? Um, there's local agencies like, you know, Silicon Valley Bike Coalition, um, you know, the Bay Trail. And I think we all kind of come to work together to make sure these things are supported um, so that, you know, usually, you know, bike to work day, people are biking from, from San Francisco down through Santa Cruz, um, which is a, a long distance. You want to make sure that those connections are there and that they're clean and that they're safe. So, you know, adopting roads and adopting different segments of the bike trail, um, really ensuring that we're all kind of helping to do our part in keeping these things open and available to people. Awesome. Um, you touched on something too uh, that I know, you know, during my time when I lived in Southern California, I used to take advantage of the, the public transit a lot where I would ride my bike in to work and maybe some nights I would end up there later and realize I didn't have my lights and that. And then I would, I would you know, use the bus to then get home or, or other modes of public transportation. How important has that been for you guys in your programming and in the initiatives to get more people riding? Yeah, you know, you, you would think, oh, 27 different public transit agencies, you guys have a lot of different options. Um, but, you know, we're on, we're on the little back end of the island. You know, half of our, our campus has water on one side, and then we've got the freeways right there in front of us. Um, so when it comes to public transit, there's no real major solid connection direct to our campus. There's no direct train connection to our campus. There's no real major direct bus line to our campus. So we have to kind of um, facilitate and fill in where we can and be our own um, transit agency, so to speak. Um, so we do offer public transit passes where people can, you know, utilize public transportation, put your bike on, on the bus or the train or whatever, get off. And then we've got our commuter shuttles that you can put your bikes um, and continue that last mile distance there. Um, where some folks can, you know, purchase, you know, one of the, the lift um, bike shares where they can use their last mile uh, service there. Um, so really just making sure that wherever you are for that first or last mile, there is some kind of connection for you where you can utilize that bike. And even if it happens to be our shuttle, we've got plenty of space on our shuttles on the back or underneath 
the storage where you can put your bike in and you can continue your ride. Um, and worse comes to worse, you know, you're biking, like you said, your maybe your light is, is broke or something's happened, a flat tire. Um, we, we still got you covered there with emergency ride home. So you can put your bike in a, in a vehicle or whatnot and still get to where you need to go. So you shouldn't ever kind of be kind of hesitant, like, oh, no, I'm not going to take this bike because I don't want to get caught out and something happened to me. We, we've still got some type of program or service that's going to get you covered. And then once you get home safely, bring that bike back and we'll bring it into the shops and get it fixed for you. So again, just keeping that, that full circle connection of, you know, in any moment with that bike, we've got you covered. Yeah. So speaking of shops, how important was it to um, build your own bike shop or, and have that as part of the campus and part of the program? Um, it's very important, um, you know, with our campus, our campus is kind of spread throughout um, one freeway exit to another. Um, so making sure that we do have a, a campus bike program um, where you can ride our bikes. And so we make sure that we keep those maintained and fixed, but we also extend our bike shops um, to our employees so that when they're doing their bike ride into work or they're doing that first or last mile ride into work with their bike and you know they need that maintenance or something happens to happen we've got you covered right here on campus so you don't need to go anywhere necessarily you don't need to worry about finding a bike shop uh, we've got that right here for you and we actually have a couple on campus so you don't even need to hustle over to one particular shop and and be you know waiting for too long we've got a couple of shop locations we also have do it do it yourself repair stands and stations if you're feeling brave to fix it yourself um, if you just can't figure it out don't worry you know roll it on over to the experts over there and we've got you covered so again it's about reducing those barriers and those constraints to to those you know those thoughts that keep you hesitant or back from wanting to try those bikes you know we've got a place where you can buy a bike we've got a place where you can learn about a bike we've got a place where we can teach you how to ride the bike where you can fix the bike or where you can get the bike fixed you need maps or trails or or you know suggestions on where to ride you know we can offer that um so it's really you know just kind of keeping that full service so that we you should have all your questions and all your thoughts um kind of reserved and ready to ride it sounds like you guys have have thought about it all um i noticed one thing that you had talked about was the the one-on-one -on -one con consults and um this is something anymore that like is is so like it's such a good conversation so many people that i've had like approach me about hey you know, I really want to try riding or mountain biking or gravel riding. Um, and it's like, yeah, let's do it. I'm happy to take you out in there. Like, but wait a second. Like, can we talk about this first? Um, and it's really interesting to see that you guys have built that into your program. How, how much have you utilized that? Have your employees really taken advantage of sitting down with someone and, and kind of understanding all the pieces, parts and realizing that maybe it's, it's not as hard as they thought? Definitely, especially during this time where everyone's kind of stuck at home. Um, I think, you know, just in the past half alone, we've had about, you know, over 200 people just coming for virtual consultations um, and really kind of asking questions of, you know, how can I, how do I ride the bike? You know, how can I even, how can I get a bike? Or, you know, I don't even know how to ride a bike. How can I learn to ride a bike? Um, and so offering, you know, from the full gamut, you know, just really taking that time to understand, you know, what, what are your thoughts? What are your concerns? What are your questions? And being able to really calm the person and give them better knowledge and education and support and the tools. We've got, you know, we've got maps, we've got graphs, you know, 
usually you'd be able to try sitting on different bikes and try them out, see how they feel, um, take you out on a ride somewhere with the group rides. Um, granted, we're now doing virtual group rides just for more fun and, and health, wellness. Um, but really giving that one-on-one -on -one support to the employee. And I think even now, um, it's even better because we're able to support people on a much larger scale now that we're virtual. Um, mm -hmm. So we're even getting questions from people in different office locations in different um, states, different countries about bike riding. Um, and so it, it also is insight for us because we're getting you know, new questions and new thoughts and, and ideas to help figure out to expand, how do we expand our program? You know, a lot of um, like the classes would only, you know, they're only held at certain times. And so people would miss out or, you know, you've got work meetings, you can't really go to those. And so with virtual offerings, you can click on a button and watch that class at any time, or we can offer it at a different, different time zones for different states, different countries. Um, but just really spending that time kind of learning from each other of kind of what's needed and, you know, oh, well, maybe we didn't think of offering a class like that, you know, um, offering specialized classes, um, even for, you know, our you know, ADA cyclists. Um, that was something that we learned and we developed like an adaptive cycling class. So it's really about, you know, just understanding and engaging with each other to understand, you know, what it is that people have questions about or, or need when it comes to biking. That's amazing. I mean, I'm glad you touched on that ADA piece because I think a lot of people, you know, sometimes like, you know, just, you know, the nature of things don't always think, be able to think through everything. I mean, how can you think through every detail so it's great that you have an employee base that that will ask those questions um shifting gears a little bit um talking about bike share i know you had mentioned before when you and i talked that you guys have your your own bike share program it's not a, a third party bike share can you talk a little bit about that like why did you choose to do um, your operate your own program as opposed to you know partnering with maybe an outside third party organization. Um, I think from the beginning of Facebook's time here in Menlo Park, which is way before my time, um, they've always had their own internal bike program, um, and you know the bike the, the the bigger bike share companies just kind of started popping up over the past couple of years. And so, you know, I think we took a, a bit of a lead in having our own fleet of bikes and extending that to our employees to utilize um, throughout campus. Um, granted, it did become a little bit of a, an outside bike share program because our campus is an open campus and so the community also thought, oh, well, look at these cute, shiny blue bikes. We can ride them too. And so, you know, it's about, again, education of, to our employees as well as the community of, you know, we, we love that you guys are interested in biking, but let's figure out a solution for you guys so that you have your own, your own needs met while we can still make sure that we have our campus bikes available for our employees to ride when they need to. Um, so yeah, this program has been around for quite some time um, and just offering bikes as another form of transportation once you're on campus um, as a good way to get around. Um, if you need to take a little ride, you know, just to kind of stretch your legs, um, get some air, uh, get a little bit of exercise, uh, get to your next meeting quickly. Um, it's a great alternative uh, for people to, to get out and explore the campus, uh, maybe see some things they've never seen. You know, we'll, we'll play a game of bingo of having people spot different things on campus. Um, so it, again, promotes, you know, that internal community and, and keeping people out of having to get in their cars and drive to another part of the campus, which, you know, we don't want you in your cars anyway. Um, so 
making sure that you can get to where you need to go in a timely manner um, and in a safe and costly, efficient manner. Yeah. So with that, what kind of, um, what kind of bikes do you have? Do you guys have um, like cruiser types, e-bikes? Do you have a variety? Um, you talked about like ADA. Do you have some ADA compliant cycles as well? What kind of, what is your- Yeah, so our campus bikes, we, we keep them all the same kind of cruiser fleet uh, with a couple different speeds on them. Our campus is pretty much on a flat terrain. Um, so you don't really need to climb any hills or anything like that. Um, when it comes to our bike shops, uh, we do offer a, a lot of different selections from, you know, e-bikes, cargo bikes, family bikes, you name it. Uh, we've got it. Um, when it comes to e-bikes or scooters, things like that for our campus, uh, we, we tended to kind of stay away from that model uh, just for, you know, safety, liability risk. We don't want people running into each other. You know, a lot of folks today, they're looking straight into their phones and not paying attention. And we're always trying to multitask. So we would hate for something unfortunate to happen. Um, so we opted to stay away from the, the e-bike and scooter model and make sure people are, are pedaling uh, when, when appropriate and or when applicable to get to where they need to go. Um, and then for folks that do have ADA constraints, um, there are other services that we offer on campus to get people around. Um, so no one is ever left stranded. Uh, we have other um, mobile services that will take people where they need to go. Um, but if you are able to ride, uh, we certainly encourage it. Um, and, you know, some um, folks also bring their own, their own bikes. And so we welcome you to ride your own bike. Um, there's bike parking around campus so people can lock it up securely. Um, and feel comfortable once they come out from their meeting that their bike will still be in the same condition in place that they've left it. Yeah, I think that's important as well. Yeah. What is, um, does Facebook have a goal as far as how many employees they'd like to see riding, you know, say by, you know, 2021 or 2022? Our, you know, we were trying to get to, I think we had a goal of about getting 5% of our headcount um, within a five year span. Um, but, you know, times have changed a lot with COVID. And so we're really kind of, you know, waiting to see what that shift is going to look like. And we're hopeful that, um, you know, coming out of COVID and, you know, with bikes being, uh, very popular that people really do think about um, shifting, you know, how they commute, um, especially folks that live locally. And so we're hoping that COVID actually helps to get us to where we, we'd like to go uh, quicker um, compared to before when everyone was kind of used to doing their own thing in their own vehicles. Um, you know, also there's going to be a little bit of a, a battle with that as well, you know, if traffic patterns um, continue kind of the way they are with not as much traffic, that will kind of get people back in vehicles. But the traffic is going to come back. Um, and we want to make sure that people are ready to utilize, you know, biking as their option. Um, so, yeah, I, I think that that kind of covers. Well, we'll be interested to see how that helps you guys out moving forward. Cause I think that, I think you're right. I think the COVID piece is definitely um, going to change things for, for a positive move. Um, does Facebook engage you, let me back up. You talked about like getting information from different employees and different locations and, and things to help feed your programs and develop them. Do you engage with any other partner companies or local companies um, to share some best practices and learn from others? And, and if so, 
Um, is there something that stands out that that really um, knocked out of the park for you guys and something you implemented? I want to say that we do engage with some of the other big companies, you know, the Googles, the Apples, um, Salesforces, LinkedIn's and such. But I also have to say that, you know, when we do engage with our, our, our other partner companies out there, that, you know, I'm going to have to toot our own horn a little bit here and say that we've got a pretty extensive program um, with all of the different pieces that we offer. Um, and so I think a lot of the companies really kind of tune in and learn from us when it comes to the, the biking. Um, you know, we're working on, you know, right now we're working on um, a bit of a security mechanism for our bikes and keeping, keeping them a bit safer uh, with some controls there. And uh-oh, I think I might've lost her. But, um, you know, we, we all kind of bounce, bounce off of each other and see, you know, what works, what different, what doesn't work who you're talking to, let's get involved and engage with some of the companies you're talking to and develop something that, that continues to um, be better than the last thing that the other company had. And so, you know, it's all about kind of learning and seeing what everyone has and figuring out next steps. Um, but I think our program is, is one of the, the larger ones and people take note from a lot of the things that we're doing here. That's great that you guys are the trendsetter. I like it. Yes. Um, so just to wrap up, how does, and this might be a kind of a out there question, but how does Facebook utilize, um, you know, your app, with some of the programming for your employees, does that play a role in any of your internal programming, especially as it surrounds around mobility? We utilize our, our platform and I think we utilize our internal platform in getting communications and the words out um, as to, you know, what's happening, if there's an event or something we're sponsoring internally, or if there's an event happening externally that we want to help share with our employees. Uh, we use a lot, a lot of our internal workplace channels to help facilitate that, that communication. When it comes to the kind of external platform of Facebook, I think we look at ways we can leverage um, getting information out there and supporting um, businesses and vendors through ad credits and um, helping to get the word out that way so that they can increase their awareness and platform on that level. Um, and that's something we're looking to do a bit more. That's, that's actually something I'm working on now was um, how to better engage and include um, a lot of these outside agencies so that they have a better, better voice and better support um, to engage the, the local communities, um, which promotes that education and that change um, and encouragement of utilizing bikes. And also, you know, getting the word out to, you know, city councils having a meeting on such and such this yeah. evening, you know, get out there and attend um, the more you know, the more you can do, and the more you learn. Um, so that's something that is important to us in making sure that our internal community as well as external communities are aware of what's going on with local agencies and communities and, and, and such so that they can get out and see these places or get out and get to their local bike shop um, or get to these meetings that matter and that is gonna make that change in their area. Fantastic. So one final thing before we wrap, what is one piece of advice you would give 
you know, a community like ours, we, we obviously have a few Fortune 500 companies, especially in the Northwest Arkansas region. And um, what would be a piece of advice you would, you would give someone there or someone in this Talk community? to each other. Have, get your open communication, get that dialogue going, understand what, what are you guys doing to support um, bikes, you know, people commuting the bike. Do you have shower rooms? Do you have lockers? Do you have parking, safe parking? Um, get together to form coalitions so that you can go to your local city councils um, and government agencies and lobby for um, infrastructure. Um, and also coming together to support, if you can, um, funding wise, because again, you know, these local, these local agencies and councils don't always have the funding that they need. Um, and so if these are initiatives and things that are important to you as a company or important for your local communities, your local employees, you know, really understand what it is that they need and figure out a way to support um, those pieces. But it's all about, you know, getting in and understanding, having that proactive, that two-way communication, um, you know, to kind of reduce those barriers. You know, sometimes a lot of companies, they don't want to talk to each other because they fear, yeah, we're, you're going to steal our secrets or whatnot. Um, but when it's, you know, when it's for a common, a common good and, and connecting everyone, I think we have to kind of relax a little bit of that, that tension and that hesitation to facilitate that conversation, even it's through forming, you know, some type of coalition or agency um, that can help be that facilitator um, for the companies and local communities so that that, that presents a voice for, for that, that group so that you can really engage in and have that partnership, start creating those partnerships. I agree. I think that open dialogue and communication is super important. Well, Tiffany, thank you so much. This has been such a great conversation and I love all the insights that you've shared with us and I'm sure our audience does as well. And remember for anyone out there that know someone that might have missed this we did record it so you'll be able to see this later on um so big round of applause to our guest speaker tiffany thank you um, thank you for having me it's great i enjoyed it we look forward to maybe having you visit us in in bentonville and, and northwest arkansas at some point um and for everyone else we look forward to seeing you next tuesday at 3 p.m for our final week of the 2020 Arkansas Bike Summit. Um, again, if there's anything you'd like to share with us on social media, please feel free to tag us at Visit Bentonville, at Bike Bentonville, and hashtag AR Bike Summit 2020. Thank you. We'll see you all later. Bye. Bye.